Hello, discrete math fans. Well, we've done multiplication, so let's do the harder thing. Now let's do addition. So earlier we talked about possibility trees and the multiplication rule. And so what's harder than multiplication? Addition, obviously. We'll do the addition rule. So now we're going to do counting problems by counting the number of elements in the union of two sets, or the difference of two sets, or the intersection of two sets. So the addition rule says that if we have a bunch of mutually disjoint subsets of a set A, and A is equal to the union of those sets, so you could think in terms of like a partition, then the number of elements in A is just the sum of the number of elements in each of the mutually disjoint subsets. All right, so as an example, let's think about this. How many non-empty strings are there over the alphabet ABC? And let's restrict ourselves to strings that have length 4 or less. So what we'll do is we'll count individually the number of strings of each length. All right, well, there's only three strings of length 1. That's easy, because you just have A, B, or C. All right, now, length 2. We can use the multiplication rule. That tells us that there are nine strings of length 2. When I make a string of length 2, I have three choices for the first letter and three choices for the second letter. So that's using the multiplication rule. And in a similar way, there are three cubed and three to the fourth strings of length 3 and 4, respectively. All right, now we use the addition rule and say that if I wrote down the collection of all strings of length 4 or less, then I could chop that up into four different sets. The set of strings of length 1, the set of strings of length 2, and then the set of strings of length 3, and the set of strings of length 4. So the addition rule tells me that I can just add all those up because these are disjoint sets. So the addition rule tells us that there are 3 to the first, plus 3 to the second, plus 3 cubed, plus 3 to the fourth total strings of length 4 or less. I'm too lazy to work out what that number is. Okay, how about this? How many three-digit integers have either all even digits or all odd digits? Okay, first let's count the number of integers that have all odd digits. So each digit can be any of 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. So we have five choices for each digit. Keep in mind, we're doing three-digit integers here. So the multiplication rule tells us that there's 5 times 5 times 5 three-digit integers that have all odd digits. All right, now we're going to do the number of integers with all even digits. This is going to be slightly different. So the reason that this is slightly different is because now we're, we still have five choices, but the leading digit cannot be a zero, because then otherwise it would not be a three-digit number. Since we're not allowed to have a zero as the leading digit, we only have four choices for the first digit. But then we have five choices for the remaining two digits. So the multiplication rule tells us that there are four times five times five three-digit integers that have all even digits. So if we put this all together, the addition rule tells us that there are a total of five cubed plus four times five squared three-digit integers with all even or all odd digits. I'm too lazy to work out that number. Okay, that's all for now.